Hi, I'm Adam Watts, and this is Tool Orientation for Laser Cutting. Here at Building 61, Boulder Library's Makerspace, our laser cutters are some of our most popular tools. But before you get started with these machines, there's some things that you're going to need to know. In this video, we're going to cover an overview of the machine, file setup, operation, workflow, and safety. We run two lasers produced by Epilogue here in the space, so a fair amount of the information presented is going to be tailored to those machines. That said, there's still a lot of great information that you can take away from this. For full specs on our machines, check out the links in the description. Laser cutters excel at both speed and precision when cutting and marking flat stock. Small details, sharp angles, precise fits, easy file setup, and fast production mean that laser cutters have many advantages over other digital fabrication tools. That said, you won't be producing detailed sculpts like you would on a 3D printer, or processing huge sheets of plywood like you would on a CNC router. Ultimately, you have to pick the right tool for the job. Let's start out with an overview of the tool. This is an Epilog Fusion brand machine, and it's equipped with a 40-watt CO2 laser. The type of laser and its wattage determines the type and thickness of the material you can cut or etch. The most common materials we see pass through the machine are plywoods, acrylic plastic, MDF, cardboard, paper, leathers, fabric, and certain foams. The maximum thickness our 40 watt laser can consistently cut through is about 3 millimeter, or 1 eighth of an inch. Our 75 watt laser can cut about 6 millimeter, or a quarter of an inch. CO2 lasers can't cut metal, glass, or stone, but in certain cases can etch those materials. Design is a pretty big topic. Too big for this video, in fact. So if you're interested in learning these softwares, just take a look around online. There's really good tutorials out there, and we'll be covering specific projects in future videos. With the capabilities of the laser in mind, we can get to designing a file. The laser has two modes of operation, cutting and etching. Epilog refers to these modes as vector and raster. We'll need to keep these modes in mind as we design our file. We recommend using Adobe Illustrator to create your file if possible because that's the software that will ultimately send the file to the laser. That said, you can create your design in any software that can export a file that Adobe can open. A great free alternative to Illustrator is Inkscape. Here's a list of the common formats. Etching can be achieved with any image, but you'll get the best results if that image is high contrast in black and white. Unedited photos end up with lousy results. Cutting requires that you to create vector shapes in your design program. A vector shape is defined by points in space connected by lines or curves. Illustrator is great at creating vector shapes, although there's many CAD programs that will give you similar and awesome results. As a final step in Illustrator, the vector shapes you intend to cut need to be given a stroke thickness of 0.2 points or less. Once the file is ready, you can send it to the laser using Illustrator's print dialog. The first thing you're gonna notice on the screen is there's a lot of information to work with. You can pretty much ignore all of it as this is generally designed for traditional print purposes. The other thing you should check is that the document is different from the media size. Get, to get this preview looking right, we're gonna have to change that in the document preferences. So to get there, we're gonna go ahead and click on Setup. With our laser selected, we'll go to Preferences, and now we're on Epilogue's Printing Preferences uh, driver. So this is all of the settings that we can modify depending on the material that we are using in our laser. These are the default settings, and we have a very handy cheat sheet that can guide you through the various standards for each type of material that we use. And I'm gonna cover what each of these settings does in order. The first thing we're going to look at here is the resolution over here with the E. We have a DPI scale of 75 all the way up to 1200. What this controls is the dot spacing when the laser is etching your piece. The lower the DPI, the farther the dots are going to be spaced as the laser is etching. The higher the DPI, the closest. In traditional print terms, this is going to increase the resolution of your image. However, when 
you were thinking about this for laser, this is going to affect how dark and how deep that etch is going to be. General rule of thumb that we have in here in the space is to just use 300 DPI. You get pretty good results either way and you save a lot of time. One of the other cool things that you get to control here is the dithering pattern of those dots. Here's a drop down that gives you a bunch of different options to choose from, but my favorite by far is Jarvis, so go ahead and use that if you want to be right. Up here are the raster settings. This is what controls our etching. A slower speed means that the laser will spend more time in one place, and a higher power means that it's going to burn a little bit darker and deeper. For our job, for Baltic Birch Plywood, I'm going to set this to 70% speed and 100% power. This should give us pretty good results for the etch. Now we're on to vector settings. This is our control for cutting our material. We have speed and power again, and also another setting called frequency. Because we need to cut all the way through the material, and this is a 40 watt machine, we're actually gonna set the speed to a pretty low setting, in this case, 3%, and power is going to be 100%. It needs quite a bit of time to actually get through the material. For frequency, this depends on the type of material you're using. For flammable materials, we recommend a low frequency, whereas if you're cutting something like acrylic plastic and want a nice polished edge, a high frequency is the right setting to use. Lastly, and perhaps most importantly, is you want to get your piece size correct. The horizontal and vertical in these boxes needs to match whatever your file size is. The file I created was 24 by 18 inches. This is only in imperial measurements, unfortunately, so make sure that you get that right going in. If it's anything different than what you've set your file size, you're going to get really weird results when you cut. If this is all looking good, you can hit OK at this point. Click back through the print menu, and this takes you back to the main Illustrator print preferences. And as you can see, the print preview still looks a little strange. Before we print this, we need to take one extra step. And it's silly, but you need to click Setup one more time and Print one more time, and now things are going to be looking good. Once we're ready, we can hit Print, and that's going to send that to the job queue. The laser system consists of three main areas, the release computer, the exhaust, and the laser itself. As just discussed, the release computer is loaded with Adobe Illustrator and the Epilogue laser drivers. When the file is ready, it's sent to the laser from here. All of Building 61's computers are loaded with the software. The exhaust system consists of a blower and an air compressor. Both need to be on while the system is running. You can turn on the blower from here and the air compressor is located on the floor between the lasers. You'll know the exhaust is on because the room gets a lot louder and the machines aren't filling with smoke. On to the laser cutter. At the heart of this tool is a sealed glass tube filled with carbon dioxide and trace other gases. When the tube is excited with RF energy, the laser emits an invisible infrared beam, which is bounced past several mirrors before it is collected by a lens and focused downward toward the material you plan on cutting. Below the lens is a large tray that's called the vector grid. This grid suspends your material above an open space which allows the laser's heat to dissipate harmlessly into the machine. If you've got a particularly large or heavy object, the tray can be removed. Revealing a flat bed below it. The bed can be raised or lowered to accommodate different sizes of material. You can safely observe your material through a clear polycarbonate window on the lid of the machine. A safety interlock system prevents the laser from firing when the lid is open. This is the main interface of the laser. There are six control modes listed here, and you can cycle through them with the arrow buttons. Job displays the job queue on the LCD. Each job sent to the laser over the course of the day is given a number and will display the first 10 characters of the file name. The most recent file will be given the highest number. 
If you are running jobs in Building 61, please give your files a relevant file name. I have personally claimed Untitled 1 through 1 million, so you'll have to be a little bit more creative. Focus lets you control the height of the bed by moving the joystick up and down. The speed of the movement is either fast or fine, which can be set by tapping the joystick left or right. Jog will move the laser to a new XY position inside of the machine. You can check the exact position by turning on the red laser pointer. To set a new home position for the laser, double-click the joystick to open the Jog menu. Then tap left to set a new zero home. This can be helpful if you need to etch or cut a non-square object or maximize the use of scrap material. After completing your job, you'll need to reset the home position by going to the config mode and clicking on the joystick to accept the change. For config speed and power, these other settings won't ever come up during normal operation and are more specific to the initial configuration of the machine. While on the job menu, pressing the go button will begin whatever job is selected in the queue. Stop will pause the job. You can press go again to continue where it left off. Reset will end the job completely. The white button fires the laser manually which can be useful to warm up the machine before the first job of the day, or you can spend your time trying to scribe a picture via joystick. The power button and emergency stop are conveniently located at knee height on the front of the machine. If you need to turn the machine on and off, that's where you'll find them. And if something goes terribly wrong, like the machine becoming suddenly self-aware, you can hit the e-stop at any time. It's not gonna hurt anything, just know that it's there. Now that you know the basics of operation, we'll cover the actual workflow. The first thing you're going to want to do is select your materials and check its thickness. This is a three millimeter piece of Baltic birch plywood. And with that knowledge, I'm going to go ahead and check our cheat sheet to find that information. Looks good. We already created our file earlier, so that's good to go. From there, I'm going to go to the print settings. Make sure that everything is looking good in the driver. And if I'm satisfied with it, I'm going to go ahead and press OK. Print. Make sure the print preview is looking right. And then I'm going to send it to the laser. Before I do, if anyone else is in the space, I'm going to make sure that no one is standing at the machine before I hit print. Because if I do, and they're right about to hit go, they might be running my job. Looks good, so I'm going to hit print. The data light is going to flash on the interface of the laser. And from here, I'm going to get the material loaded into the machine. The rulers at the top left make it really easy to get this thing aligned. From here, I'm going to need to focus using our focusing guide. I'm going to make sure that it's just grazing the surface. This material is a little bit bowed. That's okay with thinner materials, but anything thicker than this, and it's going to be a problem. Looks good. I'm going to find my job in the queue. Job six on title two. That's me. And from here, I'm going to hit go. But first, I'm going to turn on the exhaust. Typically, the laser is going to begin the etching process first. And then when that's complete, it's going to move on to cutting. 
As soon as the job is done, the laser is going to beep to let you know. You can open the lid and take out your piece immediately. It should be cool to the touch. If everything went well, the part will pop out with ease. Let's talk about laser safety. Here are some do's and don'ts. The number one rule of laser safety is to stay with the machine at all times. Every laser disaster we've ever heard has come from someone starting the machine and walking away. Always use known materials. We offer quite a few different types here in the shop. If you're going to be bringing in your own, make sure that you have a material data spec sheet that we can look at. There are some materials that you should absolutely never cut in this machine, however. PVC is an absolute no-no. Any type of chlorinated vinyl when cut will create chlorine gas, and that's incredibly bad for the machine and you. Use flat materials and always focus your work. If your machine is incredibly bowed or potato chips, you're gonna get really bad results, and there's a good chance that your material won't actually cut. Don't get fancy with your process. This is a pretty cut and dry machine, so don't try to cut or engrave anything out of focus or use any truly irregular materials. That's just gonna cause problems for the material and the machine, and is gonna be an issue for anyone who's using it down the line. Let people know when you're sending a job. If you're in another room and you hit print, there's a good chance that someone else is gonna run your work by accident. Fire can happen. We are burning materials with this machine, but generally it doesn't go from zero to raging inferno. If you're paying attention, you'll be able to stop the machine if you need to and remove your material in time. We have fire extinguishers located throughout the space, so if there isn't any staff present and you're in a truly dangerous situation, make sure that you hit the emergency stop button and grab one of those tools. That just about wraps things up. We've covered everything that we think that you need to know to get started with laser cutting. If you've watched this video as part of our laser cutting tool orientation class, you are now free to sign up for guided access on our website. For questions and comments, leave them below. Thank you and keep on making.